I am Jennifer Daniel, and I am a member of the Unicode Consortium, which is a not-for-profit organization that digitizes the world's languages. I'm also the chair of the Emoji Subcommittee, which you could say is the group of individuals responsible for those smileys and peaches on your phone. And I'm here to talk to you about why they are on your phone and how people use them. So it wasn't long ago that if you wanted to log online, and make a website, and you wanted to write it in your native language, let's say it's Arabic or Hindi or Hebrew, you could do that, but the likelihood that someone could read it on another computer was quite low, unless they had the exact font that you designed your website with, right? Otherwise, they'd see a bunch of garbage gook, right? They'd see a bunch of question marks or boxes and uh, seemingly random letters. And that was only 30 years ago. And that's when the Unicode Consortium stepped in. And every year, the Unicode Technical Committee publishes uh, guidelines, specifications, algorithms, all the properties required to achieve interoperability between languages and platforms. And every time you use a smartphone or your tablet or your laptop or any device of choice, you're using Unicode standards, right? It's just a single character set that covers the languages of the world. So now, in the year 2021, you have a reasonable expectation that when you send the letter Aleph or the letter A from one device, it looks like an Aleph or the letter A on another. Now, that's, now, now we have emoji, which are actually encoded in a very similar way uh, to letters, which is to say that they were added in the 90s. Um, and they became part of the standard as a way to improve the interoperability between three semi-compatible Japanese phone carriers. And um, since their introduction about 11 years ago, the Unicode standard has added over 3,521 emoji. And uh, we've learned a lot about how they use them since then. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how people use them. And it's really my favorite part of the job. So, Let's first talk just about how we communicate, right? Because I think people often conflate language with communication, and there's a lot more to it than that. Writing and talking are very different ways of communicating. How you write is different than how you talk. Writing is a conscious process, right? You can work forwards and backwards and do things with language that you can't do when you're talking. Now, linguists have shown that when you're speaking in an unmonitored way, you tend to speak in word packets of seven to 10 words. That's what speech is like, right? It's loose, it's telegraphic, it's much less reflective. And you know what else is, is texting, right? When you're texting someone, you're not thinking about punctuation. And you know what? I'm talking to you right now, and I'm not thinking about punctuation either. So if you really think about how we talk, and how we talk on our phones, they're quite similar despite the mechanics of them being different. Right? Like I'm, I'm, technically I'm writing like I do a formal paper, but in actuality, we kind of text the way we talk. Think of it as a fingered speech. So people text a lot. <laughs> and 92% of the world's online population use emoji. And one of the beautiful things about emoji is that they operate alongside the language you already speak. They aren't a language onto themselves. If they were, it would be a very hard language to learn. And that's the best part is that you don't have to learn it. You just use them and it works. And people use them more than just for communication. They long eclipsed that messaging use case of the 90s for those, those phone carriers, right? People use emojis in their TikTok comments. They use them in uh, Twitter bios. They use them all over Instagram. And what I love about emoji is that they can use them everywhere, right? So they're part of culture because emoji can be copied and pasted without any software required. Really, a meme is born every minute, right? And I love the You Want This Bunny. For those unfamiliar with You Want This Bunny, it's a little bunny that has a heart, and he wants to give it to you, and it's very cute. So you have this, right? It starts with a horoscope, but then it evolves into something about Beyonce, and then it goes into just a smattering of love, and then you have two bunnies playing football, 
right? So people are able to play with written communication in a way that it's defying formal conventions. And 80% of emoji are used alongside words, and 80% of communication is nonverbal. And though we go through life mostly unaware of it, humans really mimic each other's expressions when we're talking to each other face to face, right? This is an emotional contagion, and it's a big part of how we show empathy and how we build relationships. Now, while emoji aren't a universal language, we do use them uh, globally in very similar ways, right? So these are the top 10 most popular emoji used globally, and they have one thing in common. They're all effusively positive, right? We got hearts, we got hard eyes, we got throwing a kiss with a heart, we got smiles, we got weeks. We do, we do have a loudly crying emoji, which you could say, aha, that one's sad, aha, ha, actually, a lot of people use loudly crying to denote pride in someone. They're so overwhelmed with feelings that they are crying. So it sort of, it, it, it covers a lot of bases. Well, the popularity of these emojis are common across different languages. It's really quite interesting to see how they are most uniquely used per language. So you see here the most uniquely used emoji per language. And the most, uh, let's see, Russian speakers and Italian speakers use the kiss lips a lot more than other uh, languages. But English, they prefer the little smiley with the, the heart being thrown. It's a, it's a little bit less risque, right? a little bit safer. Uh, and I find this fascinating because what we learn is just what we have in common, but also there are different ways in which we communicate. Language is dynamic. It is personal. It is fluid. And, and keep in mind, it took millennia for written languages to evolve from purely tracking inventory or your, what you owed uh, for taxes to an actual fleshed out writing system that could convey the complexity and nuance of poetry. An emoji had been around for a decade, right? It's quite remarkable that they've been able to operate at the speed of language online. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the criteria for inclusion when we're when we, why, we, why we add an emoji to your keyboard. And the first one is frequency of use. So ideally, an emoji is something that already exists in the world, right? Whether it's in literature or in comics or in cartoons or in movies, somewhere in the zeitgeist. Because the more pervasive an expression, a gesture, an emblem, an icon is, the more empirical evidence exists to its frequency of use. So we're gonna do a little game, okay? So there are eight categories of emoji. We're gonna to try to guess what the most popular emoji is per category. We don't really have time for all of them, so we're just gonna focus on animals and nature. These are all the animals and nature emoji. I am now soliciting participation. Do you think you know the most popular animal or nature emoji? Please shout it out. Pig, cat, monkey, frog. You're all wrong. <laughs> it's fire. These are great guesses though, right? They're really cute. I mean, that pig really is super duper cute. And there's a bunch of cats, right? There should be a reason there's so many cats. Surely it's because they're popular. So these are the most popular emoji per category. And they do also have a pattern, which is they don't just represent themselves, right? They all have multiple uses. When you think about objects, the crown emoji isn't being used because we're all talking about the Queen of England. No, that's not what's happening. We are using it symbolically. We're saying you rule. We're saying that you're the boss. We're saying that you're the queen. We are saying that you're amazing, right? Same for fire. Fire, you know, yes, we are talking about California wildfires, sure. But we're also using it to say that you're hot. We're using it to say that you're spicy. And no one just sends one fire emoji. You have to send three at a minimum. <laughs> Multiple uses then informs all that frequency of use. And so to really understand how people use emoji is to really understand this criteria. Because the subcommittee tries to be as faithful to these guidelines. Because once you add an emoji to the Unicode standard, they never take it away. It's there. It's there forever. So uh, yeah, multiple uses are really important. So we're gonna talk about the pig. I mean, it's really cute, right? Whoever said pig, I'm with you on the pig. It's so, so like, yes, you can say, I saw a pig today, pig emoji. I get it, right? But you could also say, 
that it's a zodiac sign, right? It's the year of the pig. Or you can say that you love pork. Or you could say that you feel like a pig, right? That you're as hungry as a pig and you want to eat so much food. Or you could say that you need to watch out for the buzz, right? So pig has lots of different ways you can use it. Now with the new additions coming out later this year and next, you'll see a number of examples that are um, you could say globally relevant in ways that you might not expect. Uh, hand with index finger and thumb crossed is one that comes to top of mind. So is, is everyone familiar with this gesture? So it means a lot of different things in different cultures, right? So uh, it's very popular in South Korea. It's known as finger heart. It's because little fingertips of your uh, fingers look like a heart. And they say it to kind of just profuse love, like finger heart. I just gesture it, you know, just finger heart. So you were truly amazing. Uh, but others who are unfamiliar with that use case might just be like, uh, world's tiny, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I don't really care. Or it's a money gesture, right? That's just too fancy, not for me. Or it's a snap, right? Nicely done. So you have one emoji and four different uses. Now use in sequences is also a really compelling criteria. And what I mean by that is this is an emoji that can be used alongside other emoji to mean something totally different, right? So emoji are more like building blocks than a language onto itself, because language is powerful because it's a finite number of glyphs that can really just do it all. Now, it is a little naughty of me to conflate language and writing here, just don't tell the linguists, okay? So emoji aren't a substitute for language as much as they supplement it. Many of the new emoji characters that are intended to be used alongside other emoji that can be used to build up meaningful concepts when combined. So there's no need to add an explicit mic drop emoji when you can simply place the microphone emoji next to the new palm down emoji. And we also have a palm up emoji to denote this concept of throwing. So the more emoji can operate as building blocks and less as super specific images, the more versatile, fluid, and useful they become. Breaking new ground, the fourth criteria. So as proposals need to demonstrate how a new character represents a collection or a group or a family instead of a very specific idea, right? So think less husky and more dog. Uh, beer mug is a good example of that, right? It's not a specific beer or a specific kind. It's just the concept of beer, just beer, right? Um, if we had chipmunk emoji, are all the squirrel enthusiasts going to be really upset? You know, when the T-Rex emoji was added, all the dinosaur enthusiasts said, what about pterodactyl? A raven isn't a crow, and a crow isn't a raven, but they're both black birds. So can we generalize concepts to the point that it can mean multiple things to multiple pu people so that one inclusion of an emoji isn't the exclusion of the another? The next criteria is distinctiveness. You know, if no one can tell what it is, it's gonna be a dud, right? So like, you have to be able to see it without putting your phone so close to your face that you don't really know what it is. So it needs to be visually iconic and, and sufficiently recognizable at emoji sizes. And last is compatibility. So this is really at the heart of what Unicode does. They really just want to make sure that people can understand each other, because who wants to be misunderstood? So, <coughs> excuse me, really this criteria um, is, is not one that's often cited, but is, is where emoji came from in the first place. And interoperability is something that is, at least is on top of mind for me, because smileys are shared by an order of gross magnitude more than any other emoji. And, can you imagine sending an emoji that's supposed to be someone shocked, and then to the person you're sending it to, it looks like they're laughing? That's, that's not how it's supposed to work. So what we did was we took a look, you can see right here, this happened to Jamil, Jamil, sadly, uh, where she was, she was acting shocked to something and everyone thought she was laughing at it and she was mortified and she deleted the tweet. Uh, so meanwhile, at the consortium, uh, we tried to reconcile this problem by looking at, do we have enough evidence that these are two distinct expressions and not merely a variance of the same thing, right? It would have been, um, is, it, is it a meme? Like, is it just like this thing that people are sharing or is this a long-standing expression that people have been doing for a long time around the world? And honestly, 
yeah, right? Like we naturally gasp and cover our mouth when we're, we're surprised. And also when we're kind of like just giggling or, <laughs> and we are hiding behind our hand. These are two very different expressions. So we have the addition of face with open eyes and hand over mouth and the existing face with uh, hand over mouth in this next release. So you will have two distinct, distinct emojis, one for shock and one for lightly giggling. Now, while there are a number of deal makers, there's also a bunch of deal breakers. Like, does this emoji represent something that's already representable? Now, there's 3,521 emoji, so that's a pretty tall order. So the subcommittee is really keen to add concepts that aren't merely variations of existing emoji. There's no need to add an emoji that are simply, um, that you can already do by putting two emoji next to each other, right? Like, if you see something that's so cute, you can just do hard eyes and the emotional overload because that kitten is really, really cute. Or maybe you're having a nervous breakdown, so now you can do a cartwheel into a hole. And these are concepts that are made up from the, just the like, human mind interacting with each other and coming up with ways of having personal expression. Like, do we really need an emoji for social distancing as much as we need an emoji for, to know how you feel about social distancing, right? Are you stuck at home for the 80th week and feeling loopy? Are you stuck at home for the 80th, uh, 80th week and you are weeping? Are you stuck at home for the 80th week and self-medicating? Are you stuck at home for the 80th week and you feel nothing, right? These are all technically social distancing emoji, but they're just being used in a much more broad way. So when there are as many, um, oh, I think I went forward by accident, but that's fine. Uh, the, the primary goal of what we're really trying to reconcile is this rapid, transient nature of communication with a very formal, methodical process that comes with a standards body. And we do this by focusing on globally relevant communicative emojis that requires prioritizing what we have in common. So rather than focusing on how we look, we really try to lean on how we communicate as human beings because plain text can leave a lot to be desired when the nuance you just don't have time for. So we target empathetic expressions like smile with tear or hug, and these are fundamental to the human experience. Everyone experiences these feelings. And so understanding how people express and control their emotions is important and related to our mental and physical health and the quality of relationships with other people. It even relates to how well we work together. So the next time you look at your phone and send that emoji, don't worry if they don't get you. They will say something that says something to the effect of, I have no idea what you're talking about, and then you can decide you will never send that cactus emoji again, or you just have some fun. I encourage everyone to try some emojis that they never tried before tonight. Thank you. <laughs>